In the book of Acts chapter 1, we find an interesting story that takes place during that 10-day period between the ascension, when Jesus departs from his disciples on the Mount of Olives, and Pentecost, when the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to them, which we'll celebrate this Sunday. And it's the story of the disciples choosing a person named Matthias to take the place of Judas Iscariot as one of the 12 apostles. Judas, this complicated figure who, after three years of being a part of Jesus' most intimate circle of followers and friends, betrays him into the hands of his opponents, leading to his death. Now, some speculate that the reason Judas betrays his own rabbi and friend is because he was a disaffected radical. He had expected Jesus to lead a revolution to overthrow the Romans. And when he realizes that this isn't going to happen, he himself feels betrayed by Jesus. Others say Judas had good intentions, that he was trying to expedite the coming of the kingdom of God, that faced with arrest, Jesus would resist and that this would spark the beginning of the revolution. But whatever the reason may have been, there's one thing that we do know, and that's that at some point in time during the course of those three years as a disciple, Judas became disillusioned. Something stopped adding up for him. He was struggling. He was wrestling with something. Have you ever felt disillusioned with God or your faith? Has there ever been a point where things stopped adding up for you, where you couldn't suspend the questions or the doubts long enough just to get through a single prayer? Has your church experience ever pushed you away even maybe to the point of feeling antagonistic toward other Christians who casually speak of God or faith simplistically or unquestioningly. While not everyone may have experienced such struggles with their faith, there are many who have. And while we may not necessarily identify or want to identify with Judas Iscariot, the truth is that Judas' experience as a disciple as a figure who represents a real and legitimate experience within the life of faith and discipleship, namely the struggle, the wrestling, the disillusionment, the doubts, the anger, that this experience still matters and is still relevant. What happens when we sterilize the Judas experience from the life of discipleship is that we create an unrealistic expectation of what following Jesus really looks like in a real world. By cutting him out of the story, it's easy to forget that the struggle with faith is a legitimate discipleship experience that, like Thomas, sometimes we doubt, like Peter, sometimes we deny, and like Judas, sometimes we reject or we betray. When we cut Judas out of the story, when we delegitimize him, when we reject his experience, when we disinherit him from discipleship, we start to think that discipleship is only discipleship when it all adds up, when you've got it all figured out. But what if the journey of feeling disillusioned with faith and the wandering in the desert and not knowing which way is up and, and the frustration with institutional religion and the rejection of all of this for a time, what if this is also a part of discipleship? And what if it's this aspect of the journey that ultimately leads to salvation? Jesus had 12 disciples, and yet somehow it wasn't the actions of the other faithful 11 that prompted Jesus' journey to the cross and ultimately his resurrection from the dead, bringing life and salvation to all, which the church has historically believed is the most important and defining part of our faith, but rather it was the actions of the one who felt disaffected, who wrestled and struggled with his faith, who pushed it all away. Now, I know that there are no churches out there named the Church of St. Judas Iscariot. And I know that the idea of betraying Jesus is not something that Christians typically look favorably upon. But when I'm honest with myself, as ironic as this may seem, I think that Judas has a lot to teach us about faith, that faith is complicated, that it's not always neat and tidy, it's not always sunshine and roses. No, 
Faith is the mess too. It's the parts we feel good about and the parts we don't feel good about. It's the parts we're proud of and the parts that we regret. It's the clarity and it's the disillusionment. Faith is complicated. And that's what Judas wants us to know. So in some weird, messy, and mysterious way today, I guess I'm giving thanks for Judas Iscariot for reminding us of this truth. So wherever you are in your journey of faith and life, may God bless you.